How's it going, everybody? Flash Jordan here. I am back for episode number three of the Green Juice Podcast. The content is going to start to be pumped out at an unreal rate here pretty soon for the college football season, the greatest sport in America. I cannot wait for the season to get started. This video, the top 10 college football teams with the most pressure in 2019 will kick off the college football content. Now, let's get straight to the video. This video is not about the 10 teams with the highest expectations necessarily, as some of the teams you see on your screen here represented by Trevor Lawrence, J.K. Dobbins, Tua Tagovailoa, and others will not be on this list. So if you're a fan of any of these teams here, Florida, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma, you are fine. You don't have any, you have high expectations, but there is really no pressure on you to have a national championship like season there's really not too much at stake in any of these programs obviously going three and nine or four and eight would kill you but there's not too much pressure on any of these programs now there are some other programs 10 other programs i believe that have a ton of pressure on them some some a lot more than others once we start getting to the top you'll understand but let's get into the video right now Top 10 college football teams with the most pressure in 2019, starting at number 10 with the Texas A&M Aggies. Now, you might be thinking, well, yeah, but no one really expects them to be amazing this year. And yes, no one really does. And no, and no one, nothing's really at stake here either. But what is at stake is recruiting for down the road. They need to start showing progress. And if they can't show, show any more progress from last season, recruits aren't going to like that. But there is a way that they can get out of this. They play Pama, Georgia, and Clemson this year, which is like death murderers row right there. If you see those three teams on your schedule, you probably just want to forfeit your seat. But they won't because Texas A&M is going to be a good, not great, but good team this year. And Georgia and Clemson are both on the road. Now, that seems like a, a sticky situation, but I believe that if they win at least one of those games, it will be very crucial for the uh, for the next season, more recruits will see that they will like that they have shown that they can beat Bama, Georgia, and Clemson, and winning one of those games will be huge for 2020. And again, it seems to be a consensus as to when this program will get over the hump and become elite under Jimbo Fisher. The next team we have is the Oregon Ducks. Now, this is it's kind of Oregon's in a, in a weird situation in the in itself. The Pac-12 is only going to get better. It's been down for a few years. There's no denying that. But it's going to start to get better. USC is going to start to get better. UCLA with Chip Kelly, they're going to start to get better. Arizona State with Herm Edwards, they're going to start to get better here in the next few years. This is the prime season to win the Pac-12. You have the, the, arguably the best quarterback in the Pac-12, who's pretty much guaranteed to go top 10 in the NFL draft, maybe even number one. And an, an important thing for Oregon to do is establish their reputation by beating Auburn in week one. Auburn's going to be a good team. They have an amazing defensive front. It seems like they always do. Beating Auburn in week one at Jerry World will be huge in maintaining momentum for the rest of the season for the Oregon Ducks. At number eight, we have the Texas Longhorns. Here's the thing, man. Every year it seems like, you know, within the first seven or eight weeks, like, like it was last year, that everyone was like, oh, Texas is back now. And then they go and lose to Oklahoma State. Um, but here's the issue with Texas this year. Look, and, and for the years to come, really. Oklahoma isn't going anywhere. Lincoln Riley has got that program going well for the next five or ten years. They're going to be at the top of the conference in that race every single year. And also, the rest of the conference is going to start getting better. You look at Iowa State, who... Defensively, they might be the best team, uh, best defensive team in the Big 12, no doubt about it. The conference really doesn't play any defense, so really, just if you're if you're competent, if you're competent, you'll you might have the best defense in the Big 12. But Baylor's going to get better as well. You know, Gary Patterson has TCU ready every year, and also this year, they don't play Maryland. Texas doesn't play Maryland, so they might get through their non-conference schedule, but. They do play LSU this year, and winning against LSU at home is going to be huge for their season. So how do they salvage this season into a good one? They need to win the games they're supposed to win. Maryland's not on their schedule again, so they don't have to worry about the powerhouse that Maryland is. And they also 
don't have to worry about know, like a, a Will Greer or any other amazing quarterback really in the Big 12. And so they need to win the game they're supposed to win. They can afford a loss to Oklahoma, that's fine. But they don't, I, they can't fool us again into thinking Texas is back because we've fallen for this trick a number of times. Remember when they beat Notre Dame a couple of years ago to start the college football season? They tricked us. We thought Texas was back now. They weren't back. So this is the year to really show us, Sam Ellinger, like you said at the end, excuse me, like you said at the end of the Sugar Bowl last year, to show us if Texas is really back. Next, we have a team that they play in week two. LSU will travel to Texas. Now, the LSU Tigers are an interesting situation. They're in the SEC, and the top four SEC teams rec all recruit amazingly. LSU is one of those teams. But this is a huge season for their coach, Ed Orgeron, and their quarterback, Joe Burrow. Ed Orgeron has had the reputation of coming in and doing amazing once he gets into a school, and then he can't really develop the program. Well, he's doing all right at LSU so far. And this is going to be a huge year for him, again, and his reputation. And Joe Burrow, if he doesn't develop into the amazing dual threat quarterback that they're trying to make him into this year, the new spread offense that they're inputting, this will be two years wasted on just an average quarterback. LSU needs an above average quarterback and they'll win 10 games because the rest of the team is just that talented. So how do they salvage this season? Well, they need to beat every team that they are more talented than which is something that they've struggled to do the last few years. And 99% of their schedule, they're more talented than, obviously, you know, Alabama. Probably just a little bit more talented, but their defense led by Grant Delpit should help them to win at least eight or nine games this year and maybe get over the hump against one of the better teams in the SEC, especially Alabama. The next team is the USC Trojans. Now, it, they're kind of an interest, interesting situation. Um, the, consens the consensus seems to be that Urban Meyer is waiting in the wings, ready to take this job, and Clay Helton's basically just in there for basically another year, and then he's gone. However, if Clay Helton wins at least nine games this year, which he could, because the beginning of their schedule is absolutely horribly, is horribly rough, but if they can get through that with only only maybe one or two losses. The back half of that schedule has a ton of built-in wins just based on the fact that they are more talented than the rest of the teams. And I also think that the administration themselves is under a lot of pressure. And so the reason I think Clay Hill might be gone is just they might just get burnt out and they need that next elite coach. Now, another thing about USC that's weird is that they're probably going to be better regardless of who the coach is in the next couple of years because of how this rebuild has gone. The rebuild hasn't gone that bad. Just every, everyone who's controlling it is kind of fed up with each other and it's just the administration is just a mess over there. But the team is going to get better. I don't know what that was. So it'll be interesting to see how Clay Hilton handles this last year. If he wants to maybe make a run of the Pac-12 championship, I don't know. We'll see. But USC is under a little bit of pressure this year. Florida State at number five. They're under a little bit of pressure. Um, this is a uh, common trend you'll start to see with these top five teams. Not all of them, but a couple of them, is that this is mostly about the coach. They are paying Whitley Tagger way too money to just be an average or below average football team. So an easy way to keep your job if you're Willie Tagger is win three of these six games. And I think at least three of these teams, maybe even four of them, they are more talented than. I think maybe them and Miami are equal talent-wise, but coaching is all they need. They're probably more talented than Florida State, or excuse me, Boise State, Virginia, Syracuse, and again, maybe Miami. Clemson and Florida might have a bit of a talent edge, but if they can win at least three of those six games, being Boise State, Virginia, Clemson, Syracuse, Miami, at Florida, I forgot to add, the games are at Virginia and at Clemson, they can win at least three of those six games, particularly the ones at home. They, Willie Tiger can salvage this season. And then they also have to take care of the teams that they are also more talented than in the non-conference and within the ACC themselves. At number four, Nebraska. Now, Nebraska is pretty interesting. Of all the teams on this list, they can afford to lose the most amount of games they can, they can afford to be the worst team on this list 
and yet their coach won't get fired and nothing bad will happen. With that being said, the expectations are high, especially in the media and with the college football fans this year for Nebraska, being that the schedule is very, very favorable, and Adrian Martinez is arguably the most exciting player in the Big Ten. Um, with, in terms of the schedule, their hardest game is at home versus Ohio State. That's it. Their hardest road game isn't even that hard neither. I think at Colorado, or I think, I think at Colorado might be their hardest road game. And I'm probably missing one there, but the point is their schedule lines up perfectly for them. And they are poised to make a run this year. Um, again, the Big Ten West in itself is so wide open that anybody can come out of there. And so if they can just handle the business, Adrian Martinez making plays, Nebraska could go 10-2 and this year, or maybe even better. Maybe they beat Ohio State and they put on a dark horse playoff season. Probably not going to happen, but the entire season for this year in Nebraska is resting on Adrian Martinez. If he plays well, this team's going to be really good. And again, if they have you know a 6-6, six 7-5 and six, seven, five season, they're not going to get killed over that, and it won't necessarily be a disappointing season, but the expectations are high. And now, these three teams right here are, like, either this pressure is going to produce diamonds, or it's, I don't know, they, they, they won't know where to go from here. Number three, we have the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, this may be Jake Fromm's last year. We don't know how, how much, you know, he really wants to stay there. For his senior year don't know if he has his degree yet or if he will have it after his junior year but kind of like nebraska um the schedule lines up all right the road schedule in the conference is not hard at all and which makes it so that anything under 11 and 1 is disappointing they're more talented than, than yeah they're more talented than every team on their schedule i would say and so it all comes down to can they beat alabama finally get over that hump where Nick Saban loses to one of his assistants. Can Kirby Smart break that curse? And can Jake Fromm put on the performance of a lifetime that he needs to to beat Alabama and hopefully get Georgia back to the national championship game? I don't know. But this is this is the year for Georgia. It needs to be this year. They need to beat Alabama this year or else I don't know where they're going to go. Because again, Alabama is not going in anywhere, and they won't go anywhere until Nick Saban retires. So they need to be Alabama this year. Speaking of Alabama, it's not Alabama, but the team in the state of Alabama, and they play them every year, the Auburn Tigers, number two. Uh, this is one of the situations where it's just the coach. Gus Melzon, I wish I had a picture a life picture of him right now is literally the seat is it's a literal hot seat the seat is on fire in his office and he's making that face right there um he's getting paid way too much and so maybe it's a it's a nice seat maybe he bought uh maybe gucci makes seats makes uh, lawn chairs now maybe that's what he's sitting on but he is on the hot seat and that's why alabama or auburn is under a lot of pressure this year and the schedule is absolutely brutal as well they play Oregon this year, arguably the best Pac-12 team, at Texas A&M, at Florida, at LSU, at home versus Georgia, and home versus Alabama. I think if they win at least two of those six games, Gus Malzahn will be okay, and he will survive another year. Now, maybe Auburn fans don't want that, but that's, that's probably going to be the reality, is if they win two of those games, wins over Oregon or at, at Texas A&M, could save his job. Um, it's going to be interesting, though. Two, I think, believe it is two freshman quarterbacks. One might be a red, red shirt, one's a true freshman. I don't know off the top of my head, but Joey Gatewood and Bo Nix um, are going to compete for that starting job. And whoever it is, the pressure that's going to be under them as players going uh, to Texas to play Oregon and Jerry World at AM, at Florida, at LSU, and playing Georgia and Alabama, it, it's going to be tough no matter who the quarterback is. So Auburn is under a ton of pressure, and especially Gus Malzahn this year. And the team with the most pressure on them in 2019 is the Michigan Wolverines. Oh boy. These, but the stars are aligned. Ohio State, a lot of people were predicting them. I'd say 90 to 95% of all the predictions out there. 
think that Michigan is going to beat Ohio State this year. Finally, get over that hump after seven straight losses, unless you're Joey Galloway, former Ohio State alum, that thinks they're going to go undefeated. I hope that happens. But I don't. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But anyway, this is not an Ohio State video. This is Michigan. More pressure on them than any team in college football. Ohio State is down because or they could be down because of a new quarterback and a new coach. We don't know how that's going to go. Michigan also plays Notre Dame and Michigan State at home this year. And Penn State offensively will be down. Defensively, they might be a little bit better. But you need to score in order to win ball games. I don't know if Penn State's going to be able to do enough of that this year. In 2020, they should be a really good team. But they're Michigan's toughest road game at Penn State. Um, it probably will be the whiteout game, which is always tough. But I think Penn State will be a little down this year. And of course, Michigan has Shea Patterson, who is destined for a special season with the new offensive scheme, more of an air attack to utilize Shea Patterson's abilities. And, and at this point this year, you have the team. There's no more excuses for Michigan. You either beat Ohio State and win the Big Ten Championship this year, or I don't know if you ever do it. Because again, Ohio State has a lot of questions. Um, they lost all that speed at receiver. They still have good receivers, but they lost all that speed that killed you last year. So can you adapt and beat Ohio State this year and win the Big Ten Championship? We will see. But Michigan, number one overall team with the most pressure on them in 2019. So thank you guys for watching. Let me just let you know what is going to come up on this channel within the next month or so um, before the season starts and when the season starts. The Jordan and Dad Show will be starting up for season four. Um, the Big Ten preview should come out within the next week or so. Really excited about that. Or me and C Crew Sports uh, talk about who how we think the Big Ten West and Big Ten East divisions are going to go down. Also this year, an addition we're making, we're going to give our combined preseason top 25 to give you what we think are the 25 best teams in college football to start the 2019 season. And we're also just going to give a complete preview of how we think the rest of the conferences are going to go down as well. Maybe not go as in-depth, we're going to give you a complete preview there. Can't wait for that. And of course, when the season starts, we're going to give you our weekly college pick and video. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you, if you want to see those. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.